This is code.org, and we have the starts of a game. So let's see what else we need to do. All right, catch the coin, increasing the score, increase the score. Let's make it, let's make that the score change now too. Let's make that score change now too. Got it. To complete the game, you'll need to be able to tell if the bunny is touching the coin and then reset it. All right. Do this. Use an if statement and the is touching block. By the way, if your coin's not resetting, go back and do the last part. If you're stuck, watch my tutorial. Uh, and is touching block to increase the score when the bunny catches the coin. All right, so we need the is touching block to increase the score. Got it. So an if statement. We're doing a conditional. Make sure you're calling your function to reset the coin when it's been caught. So we need to make sure that the coin's actually touching, right? We've caught it, and then we need to reset it. Play the game and randomize the velocity. All right, one thing at a time. First, we need an if statement, and we want to check if the money is touching. Ooh, they gave us movement controls, which we had. All right, so now I'm going to go to control, and let me reset this, and I'm going to drop an if statement. I'll just do it here, we'll say, and I'm going to put a line just to make it clear, a blank space. You don't need to. This is not needed. But all right, now what do we want to check if what? If the bunny is touching something. So to do that, I can head over to sprites. And here we are, our is touching block. I'm just going to drop that in. Let me scroll up because we don't have sprite and target. Our sprite, let's see, I want to check if the bunny. So instead of saying the word sprite, I'm going to say bunny. And then what do I want to know if it's touching? It looks like we called it coin. So now keep in mind what an if statement does. Bunny is touching will return true or false. You could think of it as zero one binary zero is false one's true but anyways we're asking the computer a question hey is the bunny touching the coin and what we're really asking is hey the x y coordinates of the bunny are they near the coin but regardless the computer will respond true or false if it is true the bunny is touching the coin their x y coordinates are near each other this is true and any code i have in this if statement will run if it is false the bunny is not touching the coin that's fine it just goes zoop and runs the code beneath if it's true, it goes inside and runs this block and this like blue mouth thing and then runs the code beneath. If it's false, it doesn't run the code inside. It just goes right beneath and keeps going. So the only thing it misses if it's false is this line or two that we have inside. We want to reset the coin. Well, how are we resetting the coin? I could start by doing, you know, coin.y is equal to, you know, negative 20 or whatever I wanted at the top. I don't need to do that, though. I have a code, a block of code, a box of code, a function called set coin. Every time I ask this to run, the computer goes and looks for this function, set coin, and runs it. So if I write set coin here, what will happen is if the bunny is touching the coin, the computer says true, this code runs set coin, and the computer says set coin. What's that? Mm, smack. Oh, it's this. It runs these three lines, putting the coin back at the top, randomizing the X, and putting its Y value way up here. Then it goes back up here. We finish that line, because this is what we just run, and we keep going. So now the coin should at least reset when we get it. All right, we got bullet point one. Let's see next. Make sure you're calling your function. Oh, no, we did that. Play the game and randomize the velocity of the coin to a range that you think is fun. Oh, the velocity. So the fun thing about this is you might think, oh, I need to change the velocity. And I could do sprite.velocity y. That, that's not what I wanted. I could do sprite.velocity y and I could drop it here and I could drop it here and everywhere I run and reset the coin, I could change the velocity. Don't do that much work. We should, inside set coin, we are already changing the velocity back to four. When we reset it, we're changing the velocity. So now we can change it to be random and I don't have to put it in 19 places in the code. I just need to change it once and everywhere we say set coin, wherever it's called, it's going to change the velocity, including way up here. At the beginning all right so something i think is fun i don't want it to be too bad, hard i'm not that great uh, i'm gonna do two to eight if i start losing i'm gonna change my mind go bunny go go yes oh that's faster oh that's too fast no okay that was sad you should notice our score isn't going up there let's fix that so let's see here it looks like set coin we have here now when the bunny is touching the coin we need to add to the score so let me go to variables i'm going to reset this and let's see we do have a variable named score and down here on line 30 we say the word score so this string plus the variable score whatever it's equal to is put onto the screen so now and my bunny is touching 
it's going to be similar to the counter pattern. I'm going to say, hey, whatever the score is equal to is now going to be equal to the score plus one because the bunny got the coin. Now, make sure you have set coin here as well, because if I get rid of this, we're not going to have fun times. Hmm. Might be weird. I'm going to refresh the page. I hit F5 or the little circle-y thing. Let's try that again. There we are. Notice how it goes up forever, and that's because you absolutely have to have the function to set the coin, because as long as the bunny is touching the coin now, the scroll score goes up, which is why our handy function that does set coin is so important. And now it will instantly go back to the top, and I only get one point. I'm so slow. Ooh, cool. Onward.